Welcome back to the comic book ASM artist. Today we are doing another comic book haul. First off, we have Batman number 51. is coming to an end, but I can't remember the exact issue. number seven. And I wanted to mention and kind of update you guys a little bit. This past weekend, my wife and I celebrated our, tw our uh, 12th wedding anniversary my kid just had his 10th birthday on Thursday, which is why we missed the live stream. And then uh, I'll play this coming Friday. I will have my Indiegogo launched, so you'll be able to uh, purchase the comic and other perks as well. And uh, like I said, hopefully that'll be on Friday. I will have the campaign video up when it goes up, so if you see that in your feed, go over to Indiegogo and go buy the book. And then I was generously able to acquire refurbished refurb, refurbished 
Microsoft Pro Surface. So I'm learning how to use the uh, Clip Studio on there to make my comics. I still want to do mostly physical if I can, but you definitely need to uh, figure out how to do stuff on the computer as well. I know with the uh, first one, my wife did all the, uh, she inserted all the dialogue on the computer. So obviously I want to be as self-sufficient as I can. Challengers, and I believe this is a six-part series, so they're halfway through with it. Silencer number seven. Seems like a lot of these um, previews I'm showing you today are a lot of setup. Not showing a lot of action. action page for you.
Next is Action Comics number 1001. Looks really cool. felt the need to throw Superman on the title of Action Comics. The book's been running for a thousand issues. We don't think we figured out who's in the book by now. Kind of random. Another beautiful Mark Brooks cover. Detective Comics number 985. number 24.
is so bold. I love the, the thick lines and it's very stylized, but it's um it's unique. some changing art styles here. Looks like they do that a couple more times in the book too. It's pretty neat. I don't know if it's going through the different um, personalities he's going through or what. I didn't read it, I just saw the visuals, so. But it looks interesting. As always, let me know down below what you guys are reading right now and what you're excited about. Did you uh, see anything at uh, the Comic-Con news for San Diego and that excited you? My main thing, I'm excited that they're finally releasing the um, Fox Kids version of Two-Face. couple others too, but Two-Face was always one of my favorite Batman animated villains. And I just love this visual design where they had the huge lip hanging off the side of it and everything. I know they're doing, a, they're doing one of him, uh, the Grey Ghost. Scarecrow, and then I can't remember the fourth one. Oh yeah, they're doing one of the robot Batman hard act. And it comes with different heads where half of it's battle damaged and stuff. I'm just glad they're gonna keep the line going. I still have tons of the old ones to buy, though.
we have the amazing Spider-Man number two. some trades as well. I'll miss that value village for two dollars. I've heard of it but never read it. It's by Brian Bowen so I figured I'd give it a shot. Two dollars is you know a no-brainer. was like King Arthur and stuff and there's like aliens and futuristic things happening but I literally don't know anything about it you know but apparently this book came out before he had even worked on the killing joke see right there it says he's currently completing a Batman graphic novel, The Killing Joke for DC. So that gives you a little insight. So I thought that was fun. And I found this as well. This is uh, the Wolverine. Miller was doing it with Chris Claremont and I wanted to point out and this fun statement in the back here that Frank had wrote or written rather I hope that this is the first comic you've read in a while I hope you found it on a shelf in a real bookstore somewhere and took a chance I hope a lot of people are picking up comic books for the first time. You see, a lot of people think comic books are just for kids, like Saturday morning cartoons, which aren't even a thing anymore, and many of them are, though they're usually better drawn and written. That's great, but it's hardly the whole story. Maybe you've seen a story in your local newspaper or a spot on TV that told you about the new kinds of comics that are coming up, all kinds, many of which have the kind of intense character involvement and sophistication of a plot that you'd expect from a novel. Maybe you've heard of Marvel's Moonshadow or DC's Watchmen. Comics are growing up, expanding the borders to include the kinds of stories that people of any age might enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed Wolverine. Chris and I had a lot of fun working on it. Just remember, if this is your first comic book in a while, that comics is a form for telling stories as versatile and full of promise as any other. Try another. And this is a classic Wolverine story. Some of you are going to be shocked, but I have never read this. I, I know of it, of course, everyone does. I've seen the covers and things, but I've never read it. 
so I look forward to experiencing it. There's the image everyone knows there. And uh, yeah, I found this for $5. I got Kingdom Come. This is one of my all-time favorite stories. I know I showed you when I got it from the library, but now I finally own it again. And I'll definitely be doing a reading of it on here. And as always, let me know what you want to see me read on this channel. Art is so great. I was around seven or eight, somewhere in there, maybe nine, when this came out. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Alex Ross definitely inspires my art. I don't think I'll ever come as close, but I certainly appreciate what the man does. Son of the Demon, which we all know is the um, conception of uh, Damian Wayne. But I have never read this story either. I know of it, but I have never read it. That's what I love about finding books at that shop and just, you know, discovering these old great classic stories and having the opportunity to get them and to get them for a pretty amazing price as well and to find them in their original printed format, not recolorized and touched up. So it's like you're experiencing it back when they came out. I love that. Finally, I found this at my local shop for half off. And the main reason I got it, once again, I used to own all these, but it contains this cap one shot by Mitch Breitweiser. And it's uh, one of my favorite Gap stories. It's a World War II story. So it's very gritty and action-packed. I don't know if I want to show off the whole thing here. But I want to do a reading of it. To uh, continue to raise awareness and encouragement. To go check out his Indiegogo campaign for Red Rooster. I just backed it yesterday. I think it has 14 days on it. But I'll do a spotlight video reading on this so you all can continue to see his art on display and expect similar quality in his book that's coming out that you can only get through his Indiegogo. Alright, that's gonna do it for now. You all have a good day or night. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Once, I, once we get to 500, we're going to have a contest for a signed poster by Clayton Crane. So let's get to that point so we can do that contest and press on to bigger and better things. Help me grow this channel. You all have a good day or night. Thanks so much. Bye.